I don't know if you heard about this story, but this was many years ago when we were much younger. There was a young lady who said to have died for about three days, and uh, she woke up and said she encountered God. And it was difficult to believe. I thought that story was incredible. And so I started to think how she would even have that encounter with God. How can a human being just die and wake up all of a sudden? But mind you, I was much younger then and I didn't understand until I met a man recently who also went through a similar experience and he narrated to me how he uh, got to meet God and they had a conversation unbelievable but he's on the show today and he will be telling us all about how for 10 minutes he was said to have died uh, from a heart attack and in actual fact when everybody around him was crying and praying and hoping that he'll get back he was interacting with God how possible is this how true is this well he's here to tell us again my name is Berla Mundi this is a day show and I'd like to say a big big thank you to Malta Guinness and also to Cousins Baby for making this show a possibility and quick one babies deserve the very best of care especially when it comes to cleaning them up which is why Cousins Baby Wipes is the best for every mom new and improved Cousins Baby Wipes now has a new seal to lock in the freshness it's thicker and it's 80 wipes in a pack now that's extra wipes extra freshness of classic baby scent fragrance and extra smiles for your little princes and princesses cousins baby wipes are available in mother care shops malls and supermarkets nationwide cousins baby growing together naturally before you get to meet julian sotome and later we'll get to speak to his wife and his cardiologist who are there with him throughout this experience and journey well let's cross over now to the bu segment give you some inspiration we'll be back to continue with the day show <laughs> Hi, my name is Amanda Jussi and I understand one thing in life that overtaking is allowed in life. And so the fact that someone is ahead of you does not mean that you're always going to be where you are. Work hard, live life to the fullest and take good care of your health. Be truthful to yourself. The fact that everyone is accepting the lie, you know you very well that it's not the truth, does not make it the truth. Always be you. Live life to the fullest. Be you. This is still the day show, and today we're talking about an encounter with God with Julian Sotome, our special guest for today. Hello. Hi. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. You're my new bestie now. I know. Because through <laughs> you, I must make heaven. So I, I always come to you and ask you, has God said anything? anything? <laughs> but on a serious note, I mean, it's an incredible story, and I haven't stopped telling everybody about it. Right. Even when they won't listen, I'm like, I met a guy who actually met God. I don't know how it happened. You're the best person to tell us. But how are you feeling? I feel great. Yeah? I feel very great. I um, feel awesome. You feel awesome. Yeah. What was life like even before you went through all of this? You know, I was the normal average Joe. Um, normal guy. Yeah? You know, normal Were you guy, naughty? Nothing. Were you... Yes. I was, I, wasn't, I wasn't the perfect guy. You mm. know, had my faults. Um, wasn't very religious, okay. you know, not spiritual. Mm. Um, if you asked me anything about the Bible, I wouldn't be able to even tell you. Mm. You know, I didn't know how to pray. Okay, but at you least know. you went to church. But I did go to church. Mm. You know, um, I ended up, I, I was seeking God, okay. you know, in, in, in my own way. I was seeking, but um, wasn't that wasn't that why yeah. were you seeking god was there a reason because for some reason at the back of my mind i knew there was a god mm. you know and i knew but there were a lot of things i just didn't believe and i and i think it's because of um you know the way churches are mm. operated now you mm. know i just there was just something that was off okay. for me you know um you know even though i went to church you know i i, I, was, I was seeking I'll yeah. see. I'm still seeking him. But you were just a regular guy with a family doing your business, regular going family. out. Were you clubbing a lot? Yes, I, I, oh. I, I was always clubbing. Okay. Um, you know, um, I traveled a lot. Okay. You know, I was between Washington D.C. and Ghana. I could do an average maybe seven, six, seven times a year. Hmm. You know, um, so I was spending a lot of time away from my family. Okay. So it was also causing a, 
a slight distance to, you know, between me and myself, my wife, okay. and even the kids. Is it? You, know, you could tell it was even affecting them because I was always gone. Mm -hmm. Was there yeah. a reason why were you running away from something? No, I was, I was, I was looking at opportunities in Ghana. Okay, okay. You know, um, so, I so I was just coming in and out, you know, come for meetings, you mm. know. I never, I didn't spend, I was normally here for maybe two, three weeks and then I'm gone oh, back. Gone. Okay, yeah. but even that was still causing a rift between you and... It was, because as soon as I get back, within a week or two, I'm out again. Wow. <laughs> and I'm sure your wife, you should tell you to slow down on the trip. She always did. She always did. You know, because I suffered a heart attack 10 years prior. So she was always oh. very concerned about my, um, my up and down and the stress to the heart. So this is not your first time? This is not my first time. Now, the second one was, was, what, bad. was what was really bad. And I would like to know about it. I mean... Days before, weeks before, did you see any sign of suffering a heart attack? Was there anything that was happening around you? You know what? Nothing. I mean, even the day before it happened, mm. I went jogging with the kids. Mm. You know, we had just got back from Atlanta. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, went jogging. Nothing. Nothing. No signs. Nothing at all. So I was in sh no short of breath. You know, I was just normal. Normal. You know. So how did it start? You know, I, I woke up at about 4.30 the uh, next day mm -hmm. uh, with a lot of se severe chest pains. Okay. You know, and I, um, you know, went downstairs to drink some water, hoping mm -hmm. that, you know, this severe pain will go away. Mm -hmm. So I drank some water. It wasn't working. So I put some ice in it, hoping that will work, mm -hmm. you know, and it was still painful. So I, um, you know, I went back up trying to just, try to just sleep or something. Mm -hmm. Laid in bed, it was worse, so I had to get, I go back up again. Okay. You know, I go back up and then um, sat in a, 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 a bean bag um, very close to the bed. Okay. You know, that's when my wife asked what was, going, what was wrong with me. Mm. And I... You know, I told her I was having some heartburns. And she goes, you know, I'm calling 911. We're not going to go th through this again. Again, of course. Yeah. yeah. So she called uh, 911, you know, and then called my, uh, my cardiologist. Mm. Now, she called my cardiologist because, you know, we had, we, had a, 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 we had a fight two weeks prior. So we're not speaking. You and your wife had a fight for, yeah, we're two not, weeks before. before this event. So we're not speaking. Over what, you know, if, I may, if I may ask? You know, one of those, you know, married kind of things. So she said, we're going to go through this call day. Well, she wanted to make sure mm -hmm. that I got onto the ambulance. So at least that day, that was the first time she had spoken to you in two weeks? Yes, in two weeks. The way we used to communicate at home was WhatsApp. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> For the whole two weeks? So if you have to talk about the kids... What's up? If, you, if you're hungry? What's up? What do you say? I'm hungry? Is dinner ready? And she would respond and say yes? She goes, yes, come save yourself. Huh? <laughs> so she'll make you the food all right. But, she, but, not, but before, she would serve and she would make sure everything is good for myself and the kids. We yeah. all eat together. You know, but she stopped doing that. So we're just going back and forth. You know, because even though we were fighting, she wanted to make sure I was okay. Oh, that's sweet of her. Yes. She's a good woman. Yes, yeah, she is. Because it was me. <laughs> <laughs> You're not talking to me for two weeks. Oh, very dear. <laughs> I'm not saying that's what I'll do though. Okay. No, but this is a serious thing. Yeah. So, so she called, because when she said she was calling 911, I yelled back at her and said, you're being too dramatic. Mm. There's no need for you to call 911, mm -hmm. you know. But she didn't want to go back and forth with me, called the cardiologist. So once the ambulance arrives, she wanted to make sure that, you know, I went on the ambulance to... To get some help. Why you wouldn't have gone on? I wouldn't have gone on. I'd have just told them, okay, it's not a big deal. Okay. You know, so, so the ambulance and my cardiologist, uh, Dr. Jamson, arrived at about the same time. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when, when um, uh, they arrived, uh, I was actually walking fine. So okay. I actually walked to the, uh, um, uh, to the ambulance. The but you could still feel the pain. The pain was, yeah. It was severe. Yeah, severe. Okay, okay. So I walked, and then he said, how am I feeling? I asked how I was feeling, and I told him, and he goes, okay, no, um, 
you know, we, 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 and, the, and the, the EMT guys also said there was something a little bit abnormal, so they thought it would be good for me to go and for a, uh, the hospital cardiologist will see to me check, and okay. check and make sure everything was okay. Okay. You know, so I jumped onto the, uh, uh, well, I, I got onto the stretcher, they put me onto the ambulance and then took me to, to uh, Howard General Hospital. Mm -hmm. Got to Howard General Hospital, they took me into the, into the room to check me out and um, they told me, they put a whole a little bit, a bunch of machines on me and stuff like that. Mm. And we do a few tests here and there. And then they um, said the, the hospital cardiologist was coming. Okay. So she came and uh, you know what, honestly, I don't know if it was she or he, but he or she came mm. and started, like, how are you? And that was it, I was gone. They just asked you, how are you? And you were gone. Yeah, asked me, how are you doing? How are you feeling? And you know, trying to engage me, and that was it, and I was gone. That's the last so thing I remember. That's the last thing I remember. You know, I had, I was, um, I flatlined three times. When you say flatlined, what flat does that line mean? is when your heart stops. So basically, you know, I'm not sure, you know, when you're watching movies and, you know, there are monitors on people and you hear, you know, it beep, beep, beep. Yeah. Now when it goes beep, yeah. you yeah. know, that means your, um, your heart has stopped. Your heart has stopped. But it doesn't mean you're dead at that point. I don't think that is, I don't think you're dead. Okay. You know, I don't think you're dead, mm. but you know, bad is bad enough. I see. <laughs> yeah. You know, okay. and I'll, I'll, I'll leave that for the cardiologist to explain, to explain a little exactly. bit more about, about that. Okay. You know, because once I flatlined, I mean, I really don't remember mm -hmm. much at that point. Mm -hmm. You know, so apparently they rushed me into, um, into the operating room. Uh, well, it's called the cat lab. Okay. I think that's where they, um, they use the, um, they try and open the artery. Okay. So they rushed me in there and my wife is going to talk a little bit more, you know, all what went through before I got into the cath lab. Mm. You know, well, what, once I got into the cath lab, uh, apparently they shocked me once. Mm -hmm. Now, when, once they shocked me, I came back. Okay. But then I slipped away again. Hmm. And then they shocked me again, you know. Now, the third one was when I was gone for over 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Over 10 minutes. Where were it you going? It could be more. I was with God having a conversation. When you say you were with God? Like so, what happened was I came out of my body. So, I could actually see my body on the operating table. Hmm. You know, I saw my body on the operating table, but they, we had a, uh, uh, they, they had a few, the nurses and doctors in the room were very little. Mm. Now, I saw my body big, but the doctors and all the nurses in the room came very, very little. Just like when you're um, in a plane, mm -hmm. 30,000 feet, and you look down and you see all the cars and the human beings, everybody's very That's similar to that. Like. So I felt like I was far away, okay. but my body was, was pretty big. I could, that was, I could see my body very well. Okay. You know, now I looked at my body and um, I got confused actually. Mm -hmm. I got very confused and I was wondering. But I had, even if I knew how to come back, I had no desire to come because the earth was very dark. When you say the earth, so you could see the whole earth or you could just see the that, operating the room? The operating room. And it was dark? Very dark. But that's naturally not so, because if they're operating on you, there should be a lot of light. Right, that was the first question I asked the cardiologist when I came back. Mm. Why were they operating on me in a dark room? Mm. And he said it was not dark. But once I tell the story, you, you, you understand it. what God said to okay. me about why it's so dark. Mm. You know, so it was appealing. So that's when, you know, and right on my right hand side, that's where I saw this beautiful bright light. Mm -hmm. You know, and I believe that was, that's heaven's gate. You know, in the Bible, when they talk about the, the gate of heaven or heaven's gate or whatever, mm. you, know, you know, you think about, you, you're going to think about a gate, but it's not, what it is, is like a frame, you okay. know, and within the frame, there's this bright light. light. I see. You know, very appealing, very nice, very beautiful. Okay. So I started moving towards it. Now, in my, the way I'm going to describe this, I'm going to describe it a little bit differently because in my human body, there's a lot of things I cannot really explain mm -hmm. because we don't have hands, legs, head. But, you know, I was saying I was walking, but I was not really walking. What you're were like, you doing? You're a spirit. 
right? But you could see your hands and your legs. No, you don't have hands, you have legs. Well, I did not have hands and legs. Okay. Right. Okay. You know, so also spirit. You and you were just moving. So just moving. Okay. Mm -hmm. So moving towards the light. Now that's when I met God. Now, no one introduced me to God. There was nobody there. Okay. Okay. And then nobody introduced me to God. And I just, you know, I, I met him. When once. you say met him, where did he come from? Did know. he come from the from towards the light? No, like? I don't know. Guys, it, it's just difficult to explain. But I don't know. It's just it's, it's difficult to explain. Okay. You know, I don't know where he came from, but God appeared All whilst I was walking. Okay. Right. Whilst I was yeah, moving walking towards, towards the yes. light. Okay. You know, he appeared. Mm -hmm. You know, and once he appeared, I knew that was God. How did you know? He is. I don't know. I honestly don't Were know. Were you not scared? So beautiful. I mean, trust me, if I, I didn't want to come back. What did he look like? I've tried. My, my godson has asked me so many times, and I've tried to explain. I can't explain it. But you could still picture but I, what... In my mind, I know exactly how he looks like. Yeah, but so in your mind, can you at least, you know, tell us, raising a, a man, no, a woman? There's nothing like, like that. There's nothing, you don't have, uh, like I said before, no head, no legs, no hands. He didn't have a head? No. And he was a bigger version of me. But there was a face. There's no face. <laughs> but you can see. And, and that's, those, that is, you, I've made up my mind, right, that I'm not going to really try and explain, right, try and figure certain things out. Mm. I just, it, it is what it is. I don't, for example, my whole conversation, I never questioned God, why is he saying this or why is this? Whatever he said, that was it. Okay, you, let, let's, so, so let's go back to when you met him. So he appeared before you and then right. what so happened? So he showed up and um, he, now I'm going to use the same thing, but this is the best way to explain it. He hugged me. How? He doesn't have hands. Right. So he, I kind of went inside him. Okay. You know, but it's always best, you know, as, as a human being, you tend to use certain things. Like, for example, where I was, there were no walls. Mm. You know, it's very difficult to explain where I was. Now, the way I think, of, when I think about it, it was more like, um, like a waiting area before you get to heaven. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. But as a human being, if you're in a waiting area, you're looking at somewhere with walls, doors, roof, that, but it's nothing like Was that. it just dark all around you? Beautiful, bright. No, but you said you only saw the light ahead of you, but everything right. else around you? No, everything was bright and nice. It was earth that was dark. Oh, okay. But up there was beautiful. Okay. And the peace of mind that you have, it's just... But you didn't see anybody else? Nobody. Nobody else, no. okay. Nobody at all. It was okay. just God. You know. So you hugged him? He hugged you? Yes, yeah, so I was inside him. And that's when he showed me a lot of love. And that's the, that's the way, what he said to me was, son, and now he always referred to me as son. Mm. And I, I always referred to him as God. Okay. He goes, son, this love I'm showing you mm. is the same love I have for the poor, mm -hmm. for the homeless, mm -hmm. for the madman, mm -hmm. and surprisingly enough, he said, for the gay guy. God said, for the gay guy. Right. Now, this particular experience was tailored, was specific for me. Okay. Right? And I believe God said that because he knew I was homophobic. So mm. if he says that, I'll now understand the type of love he has for everybody. He wanted me to know that I'm not the one to judge. Okay. Okay? I'm supposed to love everybody. Okay? Okay. Don't... You, what I'm supposed to do as a human being is love everybody regardless. Regardless. And love them. 
Don't judge them. Okay. Leave that for me to do it. God to do it. Right. So then it doesn't mean that he approves of it necessarily. It doesn't mean he approves of it, you know. Okay. But it's not our place to judge anybody, to dislike anybody, to hate anybody. Hold on, Julian. And uh, if you think you're blown away by this, there's a lot more he hasn't said that he's about to say that might even shock you. Uh, we're talking to Julian Sotome. He is the man that had a heart attack, suffered a heart attack, and eventually had a conversation with God through this process. And it's just unbelievable. This is The Day Show. We'll be back to tell you more about this experience. <laughs> The day show we're here with Julian and I need to ask you are you are you shocked are you shocked. blown away right okay well he still has a lot more to tell us he's seated here and Julian Sotome is our guest he suffered a heart attack and then met God and we're just around that point where he had his first conversation with the Almighty yes. okay so he said that he has love for the poor for the homeless for the gay right and for the and, mad man. and for the madman but he was specific right. very about specific. these particular people. Yeah. You know, God is very concerned about the poor. Okay. You know, he's very concerned about the poor. And um, he wants us to, to, to love them, you know, and help them. Mm. You know, um, yeah, I, I, for my whole encounter, it was always about the poor. That's what he kept saying. Yeah, everything was about the poor. Okay. You know, and as I go along, you, you're going to be hearing the poor a lot. A lot. Okay, what yeah. else did he say? I mean, from that point, what did he say? So, so once he showed me love, that is when. Now, let me backtrack okay. again. Okay. When I came out of my body, I never thought of my wife. I never thought of my kids. Mm. Never thought of my bank account, mm. my car, my house, nothing. nothing. Everything about the earth was gone. Mm -hmm. But I went, once I met with God, he showed me the love. That is when I thought of my wife and kids. Okay. And I think the reason for that was because of all the prayers that were going on on earth. Mm -hmm. Now, these folks that were praying for me were folks like you and I friends, folks that loved me. Mm -hmm. So the, the prayers were very, very strong. Mm -hmm. When they were taking me to the hospital, you know, my older son saw me before I left, mm -hmm. but the younger one was asleep. So once the ambulance left and mommy was behind the ambulance, the older one rushed to the younger one and said, look, daddy's not feeling well, they're taking him to the hospital. Now, they both got up mm -hmm. and held hands and started praying. How old 12, and young are they? 12 and 13. And they held hands to pray? They held because ever since they were young, mommy always told them, when daddy and mommy are not there, you're not alone. God is always with you. So they've grown up knowing that. And they also know that where two or three are gathered in his name, he's present. Okay. So they just stood and prayed. And I prayed, they prayed for one hour. Huh? Yes. Praying about what exactly? For God for to make sure that he's okay that he and bring daddy back, back home. Wow. Yes. These are two boys? Two boys. Two and boys. Matthew and Andrew. Unbelievable. Yes. So around this time when you were also talking to God, these same people were praying for you. Praying for, for me. So once I started speaking, I said, God, Forgive me of all my sins. Wait, so this was after he had said the same uh, love I'm showing right, to you? Right. Once he finished talking about the love, then I spoke. Okay. And I said, God, forgive me of all my sins. Mm. I said, if this is what you call death, give me one more chance to make things right with Priscilla and the boys. Mm. Because you, know, you weren't talking. You weren't talking. Yeah. So I asked him, then I said to him that, I know you have a lot of work for me to do. Show me, tell me what the purpose, my purpose is, 
and I promise I'm going to get it done. Mm. Now, once I said that, then he said, son, and he always called me son. Mm. He goes, son, I anoint you. Mm. So that was the first thing that he anointed me. Then he said, son. He only said it. Did he, like, was that oil? You know that thing where you, when you're getting anointed, okay. you pour oil so, on you and stuff? So there's nothing like that. Nothing like that. Nothing okay. like that. You know, and I'm telling you that we were speaking, but we never spoke English. So what, what language are you speaking? So everything is a feeling. And then once I came back, everything downloaded into English. Huh? <laughs> yes. Everything is a feeling. Because clearly he doesn't have a face, so you won't see his lips moving no, no, while not, talking to not, you. No, it's not like that. No, no, we don't, we don't. Everything is a feeling. But you know that's exactly what he told you. Yes. And, you know, down the line, you're going to, you're going to understand a little bit more. But okay. it, is, it is just a feeling. Okay. So there was, we never spoke English, we never spoke Ghana, we never spoke Fanti, Tree, you know. It was feeling. Okay. Okay. So he said to me, he said to me, son, I anoint you. Mm -hmm. And you know, later down, you're going to understand why he anointed me. Okay. Then he said, I'm going to make you whole. You're, you're going to understand why he said he's going to make me whole. Then he said, you have a pure heart. Hmm. Okay. Later down the line, you're going to understand why he said that. Okay. Then he said, all I want from you son is for you to spread your testimony he said your testimony is going to bring a lot of souls to me mm. then he said i don't want you to be a pastor okay very specific i don't want you to be a pastor he says 90 percent of churches in the world he's not present 90 percent nine zero so if you're walking down the street and you see 10 churches He's, in one. He's only one. Okay. Did he say why? No, he didn't. Okay. He just, when, when God speaks, it is what it is and that's it's it. final. Okay. You know, you never ask questions. And I, well, I never did ask. I would have asked, asked a lot of questions. Right. The only question I asked him, <laughs> the only question I asked him was, is earth hell? Mm -hmm. And then once you die, you go to heaven. Mm. And then he says, son, you will never know what hell looks like, but that wasn't your path. So maybe there's another way when you're going to hell. I don't know. So there's hell for real. There's hell for real. And he said it. He said it. He talked about wanting to come. But the only reason why he hasn't come is because every human being or every soul, mm -hmm. what else, like, like what I said, every soul should have heard about him before he comes. Okay. And he has folks just like me mm -hmm. spreading the gospel. the gospel. So he just selects who he wants to meet, talk to, and then sends them back on earth. Right. Okay. You know, now, before then, he said, wait, he told me I don't want me to be a pastor. Mm. Then he said, son, if you choose to spread your testimony through writing a book or a movie, I do not want you to benefit even one cent out of it. Whatever proceeds you make, I want you to give everything. Now, 100% to the poor. And your father will take care of you. Give everything away. And he is going to take care of me. Where everything means just the proceeds from the book, not what you've already acquired on earth. No, no, no. Just, just, just anything that's got to do with the testimony. So now, me sharing the testimony with you, if you mm -hmm. say, oh, Julian, this is awesome. I'm going to write you a check for $100,000. Mm -hmm. I cannot benefit from that. I have to give that to the poor. Was that all he said to you? No. So he said to me that he wanted me to give everything to, um, the, poor. to the poor. And then um, I thought about, yeah, he wanted, um, yeah, he has folks out there doing exactly what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, he, he wanted me to know that you are not... Don't, don't feel you are special. I'm, I'm talking to you because you are so special. No, no, no. I have other folks out there. I've mm -hmm. chosen you to do this, but he doesn't want you to feel too big. Why did he choose you? I don't know. I think maybe it's got to do with 
my personality maybe, maybe. you know and the, the folks I hang with and he feels I'll be more you're going to believe me more, more. than if a pastor had come and said this had yeah. happened to him or yeah. I don't know yeah you know but you didn't ask him why he chose you no you know, next time let's go together and <laughs> I want to ask him a few questions <laughs> no but this is serious yes so, you know, and all of this, you were still, he was still embracing you? Yes, okay. we were talking. Okay. Yeah, so we, 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 we said that now as soon as he anointed me again, and then I came back into my body. But I got back into my body, but I was still unconscious. Mm. Until when surgery was done, mm -hmm. and I was on... What um, uh, oh, is it, surgery? So there was a need for a surgery? Right, so... And that I, I wanted my wife and the cardiologist to speak to, to speak. it because okay. God made everything so impossible. Mm. Okay, everything was against me. Mm -hmm. It was so impossible that because he didn't want anybody to take the glory. He didn't want the doctors to take the glory. So whilst I was gone, a lot of things happened that would blow any human being's mind. Hmm. You know. Okay. You know, so because the doctors, when, when, when I got to the second hospital, the doctors knew this was, this was it. This was it. I mean, because at that point, all my organs had shut down. Nothing was working. My heart was gone. My kidneys were gone. Liver was gone. Everything was gone. And you had to be moved to a second hospital because of Because what? the first hospital didn't have the equipment or the gadgets to be able to do the surgery. Okay. Okay. Before, what happened was there were three things that they said we we're going to do. Now, in the first hospital, they were trying to just open the artery. Okay, but it was it wasn't working. Mm -hmm. I think they, they, I think they explained to me that there was just too much calcium mm. or something, so it was completely blocked. So they, they couldn't open it, and that's why they referred me to the next to the second hospital, John Hopkins. Yeah. That happens to be one of the best hospitals mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. So when they took me there, they explained that there were three things that they could do. The first one was they were going to try and do exactly what they did in the first hospital yeah. to open the artery. Yeah. And then the second thing was they were going to use a stent that goes in to blow it up and try and open the artery to at least get the flow of blood. Okay. Because I mean there was no flow of blood to my brain, oxygen mm. to my brain for over 10 minutes. Mm. They managed to open a little bit, but when they, they speak about what happened before, there's no reason why I should be able should to be, be speaking yeah. with you, right? You know, because I should have been a vegetable. And that's what the doctor said, I'll be a vegetable. So even if you survived, even if I survived you shouldn't I'll, be sitting here talking? No, no way. My brain shouldn't be normal, you know? Okay. But that's why God said, I'm going to make you whole. So, you know, as I speak, you know, you're going to, you know, because when I sp spoke to my wife in the cardiology and I told them what God said to yeah, me, yeah. I told them exactly what God said and they saw it happen. happening. You know. Okay, before we bring in your wife and the cardiologist, because I'm sure that we're going to cross over to them so they can also narrate to us what exactly happened at that point where you got back into your body. I'm wondering what exactly happened. But we're still talking to Julian, by the way. This is the day show. And we're getting all the information about how he, I mean, basically met God and what life has been like since he came back into his body. This is the day show. <music> Bellamudi and this show is proudly brought to you by Malta Guinness and also by Cousins Baby Wives. And speaking of Cousins Baby Wives, so they have a new one. It has a new seal to lock in the freshness and it's thicker. It is 80 wipes in a new pack. So extra freshness for you. And so whenever you think of getting baby wipes, it has to be Cousins Baby Wives growing together naturally. And I'm sure that you love your Malta Guinness and I would entreat you to have it constantly, especially because it uh, is sourced from local ingredients, all done right here. And it's a toast to you. So go out there and make the opportunities count every day. 
today, whatever your hustle, whatever your vibe, Malta Guinness believes that you've got it. So grab a chilled, refreshing Malta Guinness to fuel you the best way you can be. Malta Guinness, enjoy a world of good. Julian is still here with us and his wife Priscilla and Dr. Jamson are also here with us via Zoom. And so we're going to continue this conversation, Julian. And I'm sure that you feel, you know, very good about sharing this testimony every time you do. Very excited to yeah. do that, yeah. yeah. I can imagine. But let's just now cross over because Julian still has a lot to tell us about when he came back into his body and what it felt like. But at least let's hear from Priscilla and Dr. Jamson what it was like that period when he was in the hospital. I'll start off with you, Priscilla. So you're talking about how the kids held hands and were praying. But that whole time you had to, you know, escort Julian and the ambulance to the hospital. What was going through your mind? You know, I didn't think that um, this was going to be serious. I, I thought, again, it was going to be a false alarm. Throughout the years, um, we've had moments where, you know, something seems to be happening, but then most of the time it's not. So my mind, my mind couldn't contemplate that it would, it's going to be anything dire or big or anything like that. I just thought to myself, it's, it's better safe than sorry, but I wasn't. I wouldn't say I was frantic or anything like mm. that. Okay, but what happened when you got to the hospital? Okay, so um, I followed the ambulance um, to the hospital. Um, they um, took Julian in through whatever means emergency goes through, and I went through the back to the waiting area, and I was filling out um, the forms, um, basically insurance information, address, all of that good stuff. Um, so as I'm filling it out, after a little while, I asked um, one of the, um, the nurses at the desk, or, um, and, and I just said, uh, okay, I'm, I'm Mrs. Sojumi, I'm here for Julian, and um, how long will it take? We've got kids at home that we left, and you know, we left them in kind of a traumatic kind of way, so I want to make sure you know, everything's okay. So um, they said, oh, he's back there with a the cardiologist, and they're looking him over, and most likely, He'll be done in about 20 minutes. Mm. So once I heard that, I thought, okay, great. So the first thing I do is I call Matthew and Andrew, and I tell them that, you know, boys, you know, keep praying, but dad's going to be okay. It's not going to be, you know, we'll be out of here in about 20 minutes. Mm. Um, and then I called um, Dr. Jansen, and then I said to him that, oh, they said, you know, in about 20 minutes we'll be gone. So, you know, I don't think um, there's a need you know, for him to come because he, he had actually rushed home to okay. change into, because he has his own private practice. So, you know, it, it was a work day. Mm. So he said, no, he said, no, he, he's still going to come because he wants to understand what was different for us to have gotten to this point. So I said, okay, no, makes sense. No problem. Or, you know, um, so I just remember putting the phone back into my purse and sitting down um, and not about 10 10 minutes, 15 minutes, all I see is just a flood of activity. And there are a whole bunch of, now I'm seeing a whole bunch of doctors, people in blue scrubs. So whether they were doctors, nurses, whatever it was, it was just a team and if just everybody was in blue, up and down. And then I, you know, I, I see them pointing and saying, there she is, there she is, that's her, that's her, you know. So I'm looking around and, and, and they said, they said um, you have to come, you have to come. Your husband has um, just had a heart attack and he's flatlined. That's, and, and so I just remember two doctors coming at each elbow. I'm holding my purse and my coat and, and um, I'm just frazzled. Mm. And, and I'm just wondering what, you know, what's going on. So they lead me from the waiting area of the emergency area through some corridors. Mm -hmm. And what I remember about the corridors is that there was a stretcher um, and and the stretcher had um, sirens on it. It was um, green, green and red lights, like sirens. Mm. And there were three, three people on each side of the, the stretcher, and they're, you know, they're, they're pushing someone. So then one of them says, stop, stop, stop. That's his wife. Mm. And they stop the stretcher, and I see Julian laying on this stretcher. And he's wrapped in a white, not wrapped, but... They've, they've put a sheet up to his neck mm -hmm. on him. And I just remember it because, and I always, I, I, I tell the story this way because Julian is pretty tall. There's a, there's a big difference between our heights. Yeah. And, um, you know, anytime he lays, lays on a bed, <laughs> you know, the joke is that he always sleeps diagonal because his feet always hangs mm -hmm. off and mm -hmm. he just sleeps straight. But 
I just remember that because on the stretcher, he had shrunken. So for some reason, like that stood out to me. He looked so little yeah. and all you could see was his, his head. So they had pulled the sheet up to his head and, and he just looked tiny and very, he's a slim guy, but he was very, he had just, he was just tiny. Mm -hmm. And then I remember him being extremely pale, very um, yellowish, you know, skin tone. And um, I just laid my hand on his head and he felt cold. He wasn't oh, no. moving or anything. And then I just said, you're a child of the living God. You're not going to do this. Matthew and Andrew are waiting for you. Father, I, and I just started saying, Father, don't do this. Father, don't do this to us. Julian, you cannot do this. And I was more, again, saying just confusion, mm -hmm. just confusion, like, Father, this cannot be. And I just remember just repeating that. Yeah. I didn't have a lot of words or anything. So I'm just, you know, I'm shaking and, and, and they push me away and they say that we have to go. We have to go. We have to take him to the cat lab. Mm. So they move me out of the way and they, you know, they rush him to this cat lab and then they, they tell me to go into the front of the lobby. So when I get to the front of the lobby, that's when I call um, Dr. Jackson. And, you know, and I said, you know, and he can better tell that part, mm -hmm. but um, I, I said to him that, they said that Julian's had a heart attack, and I thought I'd said he'd flatline, but I, I might not have, but I, I know that I was probably speaking gibberish, but I, I do know that I was frantic. Yeah. And, and you know, God being so good, I happened to look up and he said, I'm here. Oh, I'm good. Here. So he had, yeah, so even while all of that stuff was going on, he was on his way. Mm -hmm. So I, I look up and, and Dr. Jameson is there. Wow. I'm curious as to how you felt, but in actual fact, I'll let you hold on, please, Doc and Priscilla and Julian as well. And we told you that we'll tell the story in two parts because of time constraints. And so if you're enjoying this, um, you know, if you're touched by this, there's a lot more that Julian is yet to tell us. There's a lot more that Dr. Chia and also Dr. Jamson, pardon me. I, I don't think I have the right to call him a chair yet, except I'm close to him, which I'm not. And also Priscilla, his wife, uh, there's a lot that they will be telling us. So please stay with us. Um, and of course, next week we'll bring you the second part of this story with Julian and how he encountered God. But quick one before we even wrap up on that. I'd like to say a big thank you to Malta Guinness and also uh, to Cousin's Baby for making this show a possibility. And where you can find refreshments and inspiration in one place will definitely have to do with uh, Malta Guinness. It gives you a, dose, a double dose of both. So with Malta Guinness, you get the best of both worlds. Malta Guinness is natural refreshments that keeps you on top of your game and is brewed from locally sourced raw materials from that unique refreshing taste that you love and the natural energy that you need. Malta Guinness is the perfect companion for all your favorite snacks and you can have it with pizza, you can have it with plantain chips. I mean, it's really up to you. Just enjoy uh, a world of goodness waiting for you to fuel your dreams and that is Malta Guinness. Come enjoy a world of good. And also, I'd like to say a big thank you to Cousins Baby and it's important that you also get some Cousins Baby new wipes. Um, when it comes to cleaning up your baby, it's new, it's improved, and it now has a new seal to lock in the freshness. It's thicker, it's 80 wipes in the pack, and has extra wipes of extra freshness, and it comes with a classic baby scent. So make sure that the next time you're thinking of using any products for your baby, it'll be Cousins Baby Wipes, available in mother care shops, malls, and supermarkets nationwide. Thank you so much, Julian. And when we come back next week, we will continue with part two of this story.